Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a blackberry tart and this is what it looks like. There are three parts to this tart. On the bottom we have this buttery crisp shortbread crust. We're going to top that with a creamy no-bake filling and then to finish it off we're going to take some fresh blackberries and cook them just until they start to release their juices. So we're going to start with uh, our shortbread crust. So I'm going to do this in a, my food processor. You could do it by hand. So you will need one cup, which is 130 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add a third of a cup, 35 grams of confectioner sugar, also known as powdered or icing sugar. And a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of salt. And then I'm just going to process this just until it's combined. If you're doing it by hand, just use a wire whisk or a fork. So, and then our last ingredient, you will need a half a cup, 113 grams of cold. I'm using unsalted butter because I prefer the flavor. You can use salted if that's what you uh, prefer. Just leave out the salt in the recipe. Now take your butter and cut it into small cubes. That way it will, you know, uh, blend into the flour mixture a lot easier than if you have a big lump of butter. If you're doing this by hand, you can just use either a pastry blender to cut your butter into the flour or even your fingertips. So what we're going to do is process this just until it starts to clump together. We don't want a solid ball of shortbread dough. We want like clumps. I will show you. <laughs> okay, that's enough. You will notice when it starts to clump, this machine sounds a little different, so that's when you know. Like I said, if you're doing it by hand, just blend it in until you have like these clumps. So that's what you're looking for. Now, for this tart, you can use either an 8 inch or a 9 inch, which is 20 or 23 centimeter tart pan. And I like to use the ones with the removable bottom, that way we can easily take our tart out of the pan. And then you can either butter it or just, you know, lightly spray it with a non-stick spray. You know, there's a lot of butter in a shortbread crust, so I don't find there's any problem with it sticking. So now... Just dump it in there. And then we're just going to... I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of spread it. That's what I love about a shortbread crust. You don't have to chill it and then roll it. You can just put it right into the pan. I like to do the sides first. So once I do the sides, then I press down with my finger here because you don't want it too thick. So, and then just spread it's out on the bottom. Try to get it as even as you can. Okay, looks, looks pretty good. It tends to right around the rim here, get pretty thick, so just run your finger. And then if you want to make it really smooth, you know, you, you can take a spoon, kind of smooth it out. Looks good. And then just take the a fork and then just prick it lightly. Don't go all the way through. This will help prevent it from uh, puffing up as it bakes. 
And then what you want to do is take just some plastic wrap, cover this, and put it into the freezer for about 15 minutes and that'll chill it and again that will help it uh, prevent it from uh, puffing up plus that way we won't have to fill our normally with a pastry crust if you're baking it like just on its own you have to fill it with beans and all that no. with a shortbread crust you don't have to do it we're going to put it in the freezer for 15 minutes and while that's happening Preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 220 degrees uh, Celsius. And then when we come back, we will bake it off. So we're now ready to bake our tart shell. I do like to put my tart pan on a baking sheet. It makes it much easier to get it in and out of the oven. So now, depending on your oven, it's going to take somewhere between 13 and 15 minutes. What you're looking for is our crust to be golden brown. I do like to rotate my baking sheet front to back about halfway through baking just to ensure it bakes evenly. So somewhere between 13 to 15 minutes. So our shortbread crust is done. So put your baking pan on a wire rack. So as you can see, beautiful golden brown color. So now what we're gonna do is just let this cool completely. And then when we come back, we will start our no-bake filling. So now for our no-bake creamy filling. I'm just gonna do this with a hand mixer. You could use a wire whisk, or you could use, if you have your stand mixer, you could use that with your whisk attachment. Now, first thing you will need is a half a cup, which is 120 milliliters of heavy whipping cream. That's cream with a 35 to 40% butterfat content, or what that means is when I whip it, it will hold, it can hold stiff peaks. And you want your cream cold. So I'm just gonna put that right in there. And then an equal amount, a half a cup, which is 113, yeah, 113 grams, sorry. Uh, I'm using a mascarpone cheese. This is a soft cheese. It is thick, it's buttery rich, it's sweet, and it has this wonderful velvety texture. Now, I find most grocery stores now stock it. It's usually sold in a small tub in the deli section. If you can't find it, or sometimes I find it can be quite expensive, you could use an equal amount of just regular cream cheese, so either one. But if you can find it, it's really good. <laughs> and then, for I'm gonna sweeten it. I'm using three tablespoons, 25 grams of confectioner sugar, also known as powdered or icing sugar. Really, you can vary the amount of sugar depending on how sweet you want your filling. And then I like to add just a little bit, a half a teaspoon, which is two grams of pure vanilla extract. You can leave that out or you could use another type of flavoring like almond, a little bit of almond extract or something else if you like. And then what I'm gonna do is beat this just until like soft peaks. That looks good. Yeah, that's what you want. Now, if you're like me, especially if you're using a stand mixer, you can sometimes overbeat this and it gets a little too thick. So what I always have, like I have here, is a little more extra heavy whipping cream, just in case if it's too thick, just add a little of that and then hand whisk it in because sometimes if we're not paying attention. So that's what you're looking for. This is wonderful. Besides using it for a tart, it is excellent just over some fresh fruit. Perfect. So now we have our cool tart. Now I'm gonna take off the sides. So what I have is just a glass turned upside down and then I just put that on there and then it slides away. <laughs> Little trick. 
Now I'm leaving the bottom uh, plate on there. I, I like to because I like to, I can move it around easier. If you want to remove it, then what you would do is like take a either a flat edge and just, you know, put it in between and then you can flip it off. But I find to move it around if I really like to leave the plate on. So, but if you have, if you wanted to give it away, then you might want to take that off. So now all I'm going to do, it's so easy, <laughs> just put it in my tart shell. This is such a nice tart to have, you know, when you want to have a fruit tart, but you want to do something really easy. You don't want to be bothered making like a pastry cream or something like that. Perfect alternative. So now with the, either the back of a spoon or I'm using an offset spatula, just spread this out. And then what we're going to do is just put this back in, like put it into the refrigerator to chill. And then when we come back, what we're going to do is we're going to make our uh, top blackberry topping. Now for our blackberry topping. You will need a medium-sized saucepan and then blackberries, obviously. You will need 12 ounces, which is 340 grams of fresh blackberries. Now you want to make sure you wash them and pick through them. If there's any soft or squishy ones or moldy, of course you want to take those out. And then put those in the saucepan along with a quarter of a cup 60 uh, milliliters of jam. I'm using blackberry jam here and that's going to sweeten our berries a little. But you know, sometimes I've used red currant, raspberry, I've even used peach jam. Excellent. I mean, just you can kind of add a little extra flavor if you want to change your jam. And what I'm going to do is put this on a medium heat. I'm going to bring it up just to a boil and then I'm going to simmer it for you know, just until the blackberries start to release their juices, which will only take, you know, depending on the berries you're using, say three to five minutes, not very long. But first bring it up to a boil. I don't know whether you can see it, but they are starting to release their juices. I got blackberries in a black pot, but I'm gonna pour it into my bowl so you can see. So. There we have, it. oh, it's wonderful. Really good over ice cream too. So now at this point, I like to add like a half a teaspoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice or another um, alternative is a little bit of limoncello. Really nice if you have some. So mix that. So now, what, of course, we can't use this, it's really hot. So you need to uh, let it cool down, cover it and chill it, and that will thicken it up. And this, well, the great part about this, you could make your uh, blackberry topping a day or two, three days before. So that's one thing you can do ahead. So that's what I'm gonna do. And when we come back, we will try a piece. There are two ways to serve this tart. If you wanted to, you could pour the blackberry filling over the tart. The problem with that is, is if you don't eat the whole thing at that time, then the, the uh, blackberry, the filling will kind of seep into the cream, kind of make it mushy. So what I like to do is to serve it separately. And that way people can take as much or as little of the blackberry topping as they want. So two ways to do it, you know, depending on your situation. So now I'm just going to cut. And then I like to uh, just wipe my knife off in between. See if I got that. There we have it. If you serve this the same day it's made, that the shortbread crust is going to be, you know, really crisp. But if, you know, if you store it overnight, what happens is the cream will kind of soften the crust just a little. It'll still be crisp, but not as is when you first make it. 
So then I'm going to put, as you can see, the, the blackberry filling has thickened up a little. There we go. Like a little of that juice. Okay, let's try some. The combination is really good. You have that buttery crisp crust. That, I mean, that no-bake filling, it's so easy to make, and it is so creamy, smooth, and rich. I find that's about the right amount of sugar to it. And then, of course, that blackberry ch uh, topping. It's, you know, a little tang, because blackberries do, but still a little sweet. I like how they release their juices, so it's... It's just a really nice tart. You have to make it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.